Hey there! I'm going to be making a purse handbag and I'm using a 34 peg 3 quarter inch loom so it's going to make it uh, the size that I want it to be and the only thing you're going to have to mark on this loom is 3 pegs evenly on either side that's going to be where your handles are so you should have the between those you should have the same number of pegs in between if your loom doesn't work out then you can have it one more uh, on one side it's not going to make much of a difference for the look of the purse and uh, if you uh, are making a really big one bigger than this you could make a four peg um, handle if you wanted okay so yarn I'm using it's Noro Batchy, B-A-C-H-I, and it's color number 10, and it's a bulky, and it's a nice thick bulky, and it's 100% wool. So that's the yarn I'm using. Okay, the first thing you're going to do, so I'm just going to get you started here, is make an eye cord for the handle. Okay, so you got your eye cord and you're going to just do any cast on that you want to do to do it and it's going to be over three pegs. I'm just going to use these three and so because I have that I just stick it in there but you can do it any way you want. It doesn't matter how you cast on. Okay, so I'm just going to do a double E-wrap cast on. I'm just looking for my loom hook and uh there it is. It fell down. <laughs> Found it. <laughs> and I'm just going to do a double E-wrap cast on. It really doesn't really matter what cast on you do. And I didn't do a double E-wrap there. I did double U-wrap. <laughs> okay, double E-wrap cast on. So you just doesn't matter any cast on. And how you do the I cord now is uh, from this peg, okay, you're going to come around the back and in front and you're just going to knit off all three of the pegs. Okay, and at this point, what you're going to do is, I, uh, which is smart to do, you don't have to if you're good at finding it, but then um, here or when you go a few more rows in you're going to look for the first piece of yarn while it's still loose and put a stitch marker in each one so that that's marked for when you put it back on the loom and with my eye cord here I'll show you is I have three stitch markers in those beginning stitches and that's so I can easily put them over. And you can use a piece of yarn, whatever you, you like to use to save your stitches on. Okay. And you're just going to keep doing this until you start to get an eye cord. So by now you should have your, your stitch markers in there. And be a little careful as you knit while they're in there so you don't bump them. Or however you did it, maybe you put a piece of yarn in there. And you're just going to keep doing this. And it's really important to put those stitch markers on before you tighten it. So even now, if you can find the first three stitches, and if it's not the exact first three stitches, as long as it's three really close to the end here. Okay? Because it's a lot easier to find them now. But, I mean, you can look for them later, and I can just let this go now. And then you just keep going. And once you get that long enough, you're not going to bind it off. All you're going to do is take your markers, whatever you have, stitch markers or whatever, and just stick them in every peg. This one, though, you need to put the working yarn through it to secure it. The very last one that you take off, because these are all live stitches. So 
you just make sure you secure it by putting the yarn through it put the stitch markers in and then you have stitch markers on both ends and as your i-cord gets long you just pull it and that's what turns it into the i-cord see i pull it now and now it would be really hard to find those stitches and there you go you have the i-cord just like that that's how easy it is to do the i-cord and you're just going to do it as long as you want to do it and now I have the three stitch markers so I can just pop it off the loom and as you see this would come out if you didn't put it through here so you have to put the working yarn through here you can do this with the stitch marker on if you want cut the yarn and your stitch marker is still sitting there so that's all you have to do because you're going to have the live stitches so do the do the handle as long as you want this handle I've done it to be a cross body bag so it's pretty long okay so it's sitting there already now what we're going to do is cast on the loom so what i'm going to do now and i'm just going to ignore these while i do the cast on so i'm just going to do a slip knot and put that on the first peg because cast on I'm going to do now is the crochet chain cast on I want to have a nice cast on because that's going to be the rim of the bag so you take your loom hook put it through hard to see on the black peg I know but you just put your yarn through here I have lots of I have a video of the crochet chain cast on if you find this hard to see but I'm just picking up this this loop so I can pull this through like that so that I have a loop if you don't like this cast on you can use another one I just want to have an, a, a good looking one for the top of the bag but it's up to you if you have one you like better I'm take the, the working yarn and pull it through this loop and tighten it and this one I'm going to take and tighten it by putting it in here but you can just keep it tight there and I'm just going to work my way around the loom doing this and tightening it up And that's all um, there is to doing this so now that you see what I'm doing I'm just going to put you on pause so you don't have to watch me going all the way around and so the video doesn't get so long it takes me two or three days to upload it but I'm just going to go around and uh, meet you up when I get close here to the end okay I'm getting close to the end here continuing along and then when I hit the last one here I'm just going to actually um, well you know what I'm going to do because I'm going to have it thicker there anyway and this is another way you can do it is I'm just going to pop it over this peg here and knit this off okay and then I'm just going to take this one here and put it over here this this uh, one I had here and I'll just make this one thicker too okay there and we're joined and when I join here it'll be the same so it's another way to do it and the reason I'm doing this is I'm going to be putting on the um, this now so because I want to uh, knit over it and I want it to be on this peg I'm going to lift this stitch when I put this one on so you're just going to slip the stitches on the peg and I'm just going to put it over the top just for now so I can get all the rest on and take your time and you'll probably have it in a better light and where you can see it better but <laughs> I'm just putting on all three of the stitches here on the loom and there they are and they're all on the loom right now okay and so what I'm going to do here now is take this one back off and I'm going to get my loom hook to hold it so I'm going to hold this stitch here and 
and let it go because uh, it's in the stitch marker. I'm going to hold on to this one and I'm going to put this one back on. Oh, actually, no, I'm not. There's no yarn there. <laughs> okay, that's right because I had this one. Okay, I'm going to take that one off, put this one on. I'm going to leave that one on. What am I thinking here? <laughs> okay, there we go. And I'm tightening that up, this one up. I can find where it went. There it is. Okay, because I want to have some yarn under it. Okay, there we go. And this one will get knitted on when we come back around. So now I can take off the stitch markers on this end. Okay, and I can take off this one I'll leave on because it's not going to get knitted over till I come back now. And then what I'm going to do is just knit it over in a U-wrap. And because I've got two pieces of yarn on here now, I'm going to knit over one and then the second one because of the kind of yarn I have. Okay, I'm come come over here and knit off one and then the second one. Okay, and I'm just going to come over and do a U-wrap all the way around the loom. Well, not all the way around, just till I get where I'm going to put in the other cord. <laughs> So we're just going around in a U-wrap. And here we are. So I'm just going to put the other stitches here from the end on the loom. Okay, so I'm just going to put it on pause while I do that because you've seen me do that once already. Okay, so I put them on and I took the stitch markers out and now I'm ready to U-wrap over them. And because I've got uh, more yarn here, I'm going to take over one and then the other one. You can probably take them both over, but I've got wool, um, and if I pull it too hard, it can come apart. And oh, the other thing I want to say is you don't have to use wool. You can use any yarn you want. I've done plenty of bags with acrylic yarn, no problem. So, and you can use a thinner yarn with a, with a smaller gauge loom as well. So I'm just going to keep you wrapping now all the way around until I hit the end peg. And I often uh, you wrap more than one at a time just because it's faster. I just do it loose <laughs> and it's the same as doing a you wrap. But um, you do it whatever way you like. Okay, now when we come down here, we'll knit the last one of the handle. There we go. And we're going to tighten and weave in all these ends and knot them if you need to later on. Okay, now we're on the first peg and we're going to do a row of purl. And so to do a row of pearl, you know how to do that. You put your hook in, pull the loop up, and replace it. And this is the only pearl I'm going to do <laughs> in this bag. But I just want to make sure that the um, top of it looks really nice and it's laying nice and straight. Okay, so... 
one row of purl and then we'll go right into the stitches we're going to do for this bag. Okay, so I'm just going to put you on pause and we'll purl around the loom. Okay, I'm just about at the end of the row. And I'm going to do the last stitch and purl. Okay, now, oh, I left the stitch marker in. <laughs> Let me get that out. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is do row one, and row one is owl eye. So to do owl eye, we're going to go over it in a U-wrap to start the first peg, and then come over it again and over the next peg, and knit them both over. And now you'll see it better on the white pegs. I've got lots of videos for Owl Eye if you haven't seen it. So go over peg, this peg one and peg two. It's always peg one where you start the stitch. On peg one, you go over peg one and two. Here on peg one, you go over peg one and two. And we're just going to do that all the way around the loom. So every peg is getting two stitches on it. Okay, so we're almost there, halfway there anyway, and so I'm just going to put you on pause while I go around, but I did want to say there's a reason that I put the handle right here at the beginning, because what's going to happen right here at the beginning is when we sw switch from one stitch to the other, we're going to have a slight jog, which just means the stitches are different. And when you're going around in a spiral, another row is one row higher than the last row. So you often see it. So it's just going to be a slight jog, but it's going to be completely hidden because if our handles here, our bag is folded flat, so it will hide it in there so you'll never see a jog at all if you put the handle right here okay so that's why i put the handle there i thought maybe i should mention that okay so i'm just going to put you on pause and i'm going to finish doing owl eye and we'll catch up when we get close to the end of the row there okay so we're just about here at the end of the row and i'm just going to do owl eye here Okay, and we finish this row. Now when we finish the row of owl eye, we always completely finish the stitch by putting the first wrap on and then stopping. We don't put it over the next one. So whenever you're doing the owl eye row, you'll end it like that. Okay, and now we're going to do the next stitch. So it's a two row stitch. So we'll be doing the next stitch, coming back, ending the stitch here, and then back into owl eye where you go over just the way I showed you, you start it. So you now know what to do. But what we do is we go over in a U-wrap and we knit it off. Then we come back around over, hold it, and we're going to do a purl over. And a purl over is called a purl over because Teresa Higby named it a purl over and she did created this technique. So what you do is you put the working yarn under, but you're doing it like a knit because you're on top here. You put the working yarn under and you scoop it down like that and then you pop it 
over the peg. Just pop it over and then tighten it. And it will look like this with two little things here and a bar. So you always know what row you are and what stitch you're doing because that all eye's looking like this. This one's looking like this. Okay, so you come over, you knit it, you come back around, put the hook under, scoop it up, and put it over and tighten it. Okay, over in a U-wrap, under, scoop it up, pull. Okay, so U-wrap. Come back around, scoop it, and over. You wrap, back around, scoop it, and over. Okay, so you're going to keep doing that all the way around the loom, and I'll meet you up there. Okay, so I'm almost all the way around. The important thing when you're doing this stitch is don't do the purl over stitch here too tight because you're going to have a hard time knitting it over. You probably won't know if you've done it too tight till you go to do your next owl eye row, but if you do have done it, then just loosen up. Oop. I'm daydreaming and that's how I do the wrong stitch here. Well, not daydreaming, but talking and listening to myself talk and uh, you know what I'm trying to say here. Okay, so last one. You come over, come over, and you do this, and then you're back to doing owl eye. So you knit it, come back around and go over one and two. Look how thickly Sharon is getting here. <laughs> okay, and then over one and two. So it's that easy. So one row of owl eye and then one row of snakes and ladders, which is that other stitch I showed you. And that's all you do. And you keep going. And as you see, we're coming along. And you can't really see the stitch yet. It's too soon, but it's a really beautiful stitch. So we'll go around for a while and we'll see. And as you see, the handle is here and attached. And um, you leave the working yarns on it so that when you can see how it's attached, like for example here where this is just above it, you're going to take the yarn that you have here and just run it through the top here until it looks exactly even and perfect with the rim. And I will show you how to do that, but just leave the yarns attached on here and we'll do that. You know that don't weave these in or anything, leave them there and just keep knitting until you get uh, the bag as long as you want it to be and then we do all the next steps so it's just you keep repeating those rows and um, we'll see you after I've done a lot more and we can look at the stitch and see where we are and have fun okay so I've got this as long as I want it to go and so um, I went ahead and put a button on because I found a button I liked and I misplaced it once. So I didn't want to take a chance on misplacing it and I put it on already. So I just sewed it on just down from the, from the bind on right here. And then I'll make a loop on the other side to give it an attachment. But you can make other closures if you want. Now I'm going to show you what we're going to do with these. So what you're going to do is you're going to look and make sure that this looks really good where it's attaching, that it's nice and tight, that there's no big loose loops or anything. If there is, you can just take this yarn, go through, take, put the loop down so it's not as, as um, bulky or whatever of what you see, and um, come back to this side and just fix it up. You might as well got these nice loops to fix everything up. I like the way mine's looking, so I'm not gonna worry about it. And so then what you do, is you you can make a knot if you want if you don't like notch you can just weave it through a couple loops before we got we um do the final but the final is going to be very easy because all we need to do is thread a needle and we can go right up inside the handle right inside the I cord, which is a really good way <laughs> to uh, do this with the yarn. So 
So I'm just going to uh, make sure I've got some nice loose yarn to go through. And then I'm going to do mine. So I'm just going to go through now and do it. Go in quite a ways here. And I'm just going to come through and pull it right through. And there we are. And then when you cut it, it's going to be completely hidden in here. No sewing in or anything there. So just do that with all the yarns. And uh, we will meet you back again. Okay, so now I'm going to bind off. And what I'm going to do is my owl eye bind off. It doesn't have to match the cast on because we're going to be sewing it together at the bottom. So I should tell you something about my owl eye <laughs> cast off. I do have a bind on that matches it pretty good. Um, I will be doing a video on that as well. But for this cast off, what you should do, as you should do with most cast offs, is you should do a row of pearl, then a row of unit, and then the bind off. What that does is always have your bind off sit absolutely straight. So you're always sure that that's the way it's going to look. So we don't need to do this here because we're sewing it together. But on any project you do, do that if you're unsure because that will always have your cast off looking really nice. Now to do my owl eye bind off, all I do, and it's a stretchy bind off. It's as stretchy as the extra stretchy, very stretchy bind offs out there. So it's it's good that way. So you go over in a U wrap, nice and loose. You come back over in a U wrap, nice and loose. And then you pick up the yarn or the loop and you put it on the next peg and you tighten it, but not too tight, kind of a loose tighten. See, it's loose enough. These are easy to, to knit over. And then you knit it over. Then you come back over and you, you wrap it again, nice and loose. You come over, you wrap it again, nice and loose. Then you just take it and put it on the next peg and just tighten it slightly. Okay, and then knit it off. Come back, do a U wrap, do another U wrap. And you keep it nice and loose. And you just come over, tighten it, knit it off, and then come back around, do a U wrap, come back around again, and you wrap it again that way. Okay? And here's your bind off occurring. And it doesn't look like um, it's just a nice flat bind off. You see how nice and flat it is? So when we sew this together, you've got a very nice flat thing to sew. It gives you a nicer seam that way too. So that's another reason I use this bind off. Okay. All right. So come over, do the U wrap, do another U wrap, and bring it over to the next peg. Tighten, knit it over, do a U wrap. Do another U wrap, bring it to the next peg. Now while I was trying to, let's make sure I didn't screw that up. And I did, I think. <laughs> I did, but that's okay. Um, since we're sewing it together. <laughs> okay, now how did I end? I ended by putting this loop on here. So we knit that over and over again. And bring it to the next one. That's what happens when you talk. <laughs> but if you make a few minor mistakes, it doesn't matter because we're going to be knitting it together. Anyway, you knit it over. You come back over. Knit it again. Knit it again. I'm going to pay attention to what I'm doing. So less talking, more looking at the camera to keep it in frame. <laughs> and more doing the stitch properly. We go over it. We go over it again. Bring it on to the next peg, tighten it a little bit, knit it off, come back around, knit it off again, 
and knit it off again. Take it, put it on the next peg, knit it off, come back around and you wrap it, come back around and you wrap it again. Now, another time you might want to use this bind off. Let's say you have a yarn like um, faucet or another yarn that you that you find breaks really easy and when you're doing the extra stretchy bind off you find your yarn is constantly fraying and breaking because you have to put it through again and again and again well this is like the basic bind off in that it um, doesn't break your yarn and whatever but it's loose and stretchy okay so we're gonna knit that off come over Knit it off again, knit it off again, bring it over, knit it off, knit it off again, and come back in a U-wrap, knit it off again. So basically what you're doing is you're always moving it over to the next loop, tightening it, knitting it all together, and then you're going to come around and do a U-wrap. Come back around and do a U-wrap again. Move it to the next peg. Tighten it. Over. You wrap it. And you wrap it again. Take it. Put it on the next peg. And keep it in the camera. And knit it off. Come over. Knit it again. Come over. Knit it again. Put on the next one, tighten, knit it off, come over, and knit it off again, come over, knit it off again, take it to the next peg, knit it off. This works also on a flat panel. Just an easy way to bind off. The only time you might not want to use it is if it's not going to match your cast on enough. I will be doing a video on a cast on that looks the best with it and doing a video of just the, the stitch. It might already be up there by the time you see this. A lot of times I do these videos, it takes a while to edit them, and then I schedule them. And things can change, so I never know for sure <laughs> what order things are going to be in, com de depending on what happened, if the vid video editing goes good, and whatever. <laughs> All kinds of things when you're making videos. I'm glad I'm casting off with this because a lot of times I make a video and I want to cast off with this but I don't because I want to do a cast off that you already know and have seen. <laughs> this is a pretty easy cast off and for all those people who have trouble with the basic bind off, this loosens it up so it becomes a stretchy bind off. So, what you want to do. So, knit, knit it together, come over in a U-wrap, come over in another U-wrap, and there we go. And this video is going to be really long, so what I'm going to do is pause it now. You know how to do the stitch, and we'll see you when I get close to the end. Okay, so I've just knit the other two together, so then you, are, you go around and you do the U-wrap again, and the U-wrap again. And then you're going to take this loop and make it nice and big so when you take it off you don't lose your yarn. <laughs> now I want to use the yarn to sew it in. So you want to have a nice long piece of yarn here. And it looks like mine's not going to be too long because 
<laughs> they cut the yarn and tied a knot in it. <laughs> so I might as well cut it there because I'd have to redo it. Their knots are never good at the factory. And then when you've got this, a nice long piece for sewing it in, you can just take it through like this because you're going to make a knot at the end. But before you make the knot, just make sure you got a nice stretch and you see she gets a nice stretchy bind off. If you look at the purse, it's a nice flat purse. That's how stretchy the bind off is. It doesn't make it come in too tight. It is a stretchy loose bind off. Okay, so I'm just going to tighten it. Oops, and my yarn broke. <laughs> so I'm going to have to get more yarn anyway and secure this better. But that's another reason I wanted to do this bind off. This yarn can break pretty easy. So I don't like to have to do bind off or have to put it through again and again and again. So I'm just going to um, make sure that this doesn't come apart and make sure that this is all attached good before I start. And then we will um, do the rest of the purse. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so now you turn the purse inside out and we're going to come down to the bottom and you make sure you fold it so that your two handles are right at the sides here. Okay, so I can get, oh, my arm was in the light. <laughs> okay, so there we go. So what I'm doing is I'm going to clip it where the sides are holding together because I want to make sure that it's going to be lined up where I fold it completely with the handles. And then I'm going to put one clip right in the middle as well. And that's just to make sure that when I sew it, it's nice and straight. Okay, so now it's nice and straight. I'm just going to stretch out my stitches just a little bit before I sew it. I want to make sure everything is nice and straight and stretched. Okay, now we're just going to sew it together. And so we're just going to take the yarn and um, you've got, you should have the yarn. You should have the yarn. I better get my needle first. You should have the yarn that you had attached to the bag. I don't because it broke. <laughs> but you're just going to thread your needle with that yarn. And because my yarn is like this, I'm not even going to bother fastening it till later. Okay, so what you're going to do is just sew it together and you can use any technique you want. I'm just going to use a very simple technique here. So I'm just going to find the very edge stitch here. There we go. And make sure that I've got the two on each side, the very edge stitches. And I'm just going to pull the yarn through. And I'm just going to leave this one here to secure later. Okay, so now I'm through on both sides. So now I'm going to come back one over. So what you're looking for is you're going to look and you're going to see the stitches up above and you're going to see holes under them. See, there's holes under these stitches. So we're going to pick up these holes. So we're going to go into the hole here and then we're going to go back into the hole we came out of over here. There we go. There we go. And then we go into the next hole which is right here and we go back into the one that the yarn came out of from the other side. There it is. Sometimes you have to pull it to see it's the same color. <laughs> and then we look for the next hole. So I'm just going to turn it so I can find it. 
and we're coming out of this hole here so we want to go into this hole here We need a little bit more light there. Okay. Yeah, I seem to have, my light is, seems to be weird here. Okay, hopefully you can see this now. Okay. So we come out of this one. So we go back in and we look for where did the yarn come out of this side? And you can see it right there coming out of that loop. So we go back into that loop. Turn it around again. And we go into another, the next loop here. Okay, and then you're looking on the other side again for where the loop came out of. And it came out of here, so we want to go back in there. And then we want to go down the next loop, the next hole here. And then we go back in the one on the other side, but we came out of, and you can see the yarn coming out of it right there. So we go in there, go into that hole. And then we go it down the next hole. And sometimes you can just leave the yarn, the needle right in there and you can see where you're coming out of. So you can go directly over there. That's how I usually do it, but I wanted you to see what I was doing. And then you go in the next hole. We're coming out of this hole. So we go in the next hole. And I can look on the other side, see where I came out of. Put it in there. Make sure I'm in the hole. Want to make sure you're always working in the same hole. There we go. Okay, so I think you've got it. Um, I did this on my owl eye bag and my um, um, snakes and ladders bag. I, this is how I attach my side seams on most of my bags. And then, of course, when you're done, you, you make sure it's tight. And as you go along, you can also tie knots as you go along just to make it really, really tight at the bottom. So I'll meet you up when we're closer to the end now that you know what you're doing. Okay, so I'm all done here. So now all you're going to do is make sure you've knotted it. And I've knotted it a few ways through it. Do your final knot. And then you can just cut it and weave it in. And if you find you have to be really loose, and you might have to if you have a more fragile yarn than this, this didn't break again. That was just a really weak spot, I guess. So basically, if you find that... Um, you have um, a really weak spot or something, then um, all you have to do is go in one further. So instead of going through these loops, just go in one further to the next loop, and then that'll take care of it. This is a really bulky yarn, so then we're gonna turn it to the right side, and uh, you're gonna make sure that you're gonna go like this and make sure that none of your sewing's sewing through, showing through. And as long as your sewing's not showing through, it's all good. If not, go in and do it a little further there. In. And there we go. There's our bottom. So again, it's hard to tell with all these colors, isn't it? But it's making a nice tight, tight thing there. And it's got a nice bottom. You can't see a finger or anything come through the bottom anywhere here, which is important. Okay, so nice tight bottom. Now all we have to do is uh, sew on a button if you're going to do that. And I'm just going to make a clasp here to be able to put on the button. So let me get what I need there and we will do that. But we're almost done. And we've got a little bag here. Looking really nice. Okay, so I will see you in a couple minutes. Okay, so I've cut myself a new piece of thread. A little more light on here. So now all you're going to do is just make a slip knot. Although you can do any kind of a cording thing that you want. 
Okay, so once I made a slip knot, I'm going to hold that knot. In my case, I can just stick it in here. You just want to hold it tight, and you're just going to go over and do a U wrap. I just want it to be tight, the first one. Okay, there we go. And then after that, you just come around and do another U wrap. I'm going to move this to another peg because that peg's so dark. There we go. Just so you can see me better. Ah, okay. So then you're going to come around and just do another U wrap. Come around, do another U wrap. This gets in the way. Just get it out of your way. Do another U wrap. But pretty soon it'll be long enough it won't. And another U wrap. And another U wrap. Another U wrap. Another U wrap. Okay, at this point, I'm going to take it off here because it's pulling and pull it out a little bit. Bring it in, tighten it. And this is what we're getting this little cord here. Okay, come around, get it off. Just keep doing U wraps, keeping it tight. Not too tight, you can't knit it over, but as tight as you can, you want a nice tight cord. Now you want to get this cord big enough to go over your button and a little bit more because you're going to have to fasten it. So you can go like this and you can see, is this going to be long enough? It looks like it will be, but I can make it just a little bit longer because you can actually take apart your end here before you knot it to get the right length. Better to have too much than too little sometimes. Okay, and I'm just going to take it off and not knot it because I want to make sure that it is long enough. So if I had it like this and it was had to come over, it's going to do up my button quite fine here. I come right on it. So I've got the right length. So I'm going to take my yarn and put it through here and tighten it and there we go here's our cord so we got this little cord looks like a miniature eye cord <laughs> we got this little cord that's going to come through and do this so then what you're going to do is we're right here in the middle of the bag with the button so we want to be right behind the same way and then we're going to i'm going to just actually put it around the button in the middle exactly even and I'm going to take each end and put it in the bag about where I want it to live so I'm going to get the needle and put it on here and go to the back of the bag and pick a nice strong place to put it in and um, I'm thinking maybe right here. I'll take two loops here and put it through. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> There. And then once it's here, you're just going to sew it on. I'm just going to make sure it's in the right place first, that it's right in the middle of the bag and it's coming down nicely on this. Okay. And then I'm just going to go through the cord again here to make sure that I'm through the cord. I want to be attaching this really good. And then you're just going to sew that in. Okay, so you're just going to go sew it in. Not going through to the other side, you're just going to sew it on this side. Okay, so, and then I'm going to tie it in knots later because I just want to get it on and working for you. 
And then you're going to go put this end on. But you want to secure it really well and then weave in the ends. And I'm going to come in right beside this one as close as I can get to it. And pull my yarn through. Really doesn't want to come my yarn, does it? <laughs> there we go. There we are. Now I'm just going to hold it through here enough to secure it here so it's right in the middle of the bag. You haven't come through to the other side. It's right in the middle of the bag. And then you're just going to come and you just have a loop here that's attached here. And when you want to do it up, you just come over and there you are. It's going to keep your bag closed. Whoop. <laughs> Get it under there. There's nothing in the bag yet, but... There you go, that'll keep your bag close. Now I've got it loose enough that I can get the bag fairly full. But you can do it tighter too. Okay, so I'm just going to finish attaching the loop. And then I'm actually done. This is the purse. There it is. It's got its nice I-cord thing so it can be across the body bag. That's how I made it. And it's all done. And I hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, bye.